Hi. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about a structure it changes models. And mainly we are going to focus on only one model, which is Lowe's theory of development. According to Lowe's, underdeveloped economy consists of two main sectors. The traditional, which is overpopulated sector, based on industry, uh, sorry, on manufacturing, and modern, high productivity sector. So the traditional sector is based on agriculture while the modern sector is based on industrial. With respect to traditional sector, marginal productivity of labor equals zero, as there is surplus of labor. While in the modern sector, there is high productivity of workers due to shortage of workers. So according to Laos, the agriculture sector has a production fu function of TB, which is total product of the agriculture sector, is function of or depends on labor in the agriculture sector and the capital in the agriculture sector, while capital is constant. Also, technology in agriculture sector where on technology is constant. And Lewis has two main assumptions in this theory. Number one, there is a surplus of labor in the agriculture sector, so that marginal productivity of labor equals zero. And number two, rural workers share equally in the output. So that rural wage is determined by the average and not the marginal productivity of labor. So this means that average productivity of labor will help to determine wages, as all of them share equally in the production. While with respect to the second sector, which is the manufacturing sector or the industrial sector, Production or total product of manufacturing is a function of labor and technology, while technology is constant. Capital in the manufacturing sector increases due to reinvestment of profit. So in the manufacturing sector, the main objective of the producer is to make profit in order to reinvest it and increase capital. So total product curves shift upward. Also this model, this, uh, model assumed that Supply of rural labor is assumed to be unlimited or perfectly inelastic. This is with respect to labor in the agriculture sector. At the same time, in the manufacturing sector, as total product increases, demand for labor will increase as well.
these can be represented graphically as follows. The right hand side panel are related to the agriculture sector while the left ones are related to the manufacturing sector. This is quantity and labor. Sorry, this quantity of labor in the agriculture and this is total output or total product. And this is quantity of labor in the agriculture sector this is marginal productivity of labor and average productivity of labor in the agriculture sector. So in the agriculture sector, production is going to increase, start from the origin, increase, and then it's almost constant. After a certain point, it's almost constant. At this point, the wage rate will be determined by the average productivity of workers. Actually, in this point, marginal productivity of workers will be zero. And if you are going to add more workers up uh, more than this point, their productivity will be negative. So this is marginal productivity of labor. While average of productivity of labor is decreasing, but it's negative, uh, sorry, it's positive. So this is the wage rate in this case. This is the wage in the agriculture sector. What about the manufacturing sector? This is the production in the manufacturing sector. This is quantity of labor in the manufacturing, total product in the manufacturing, quantity of labor in the manufacturing marginal productivity of labor and average productivity of labor in the manufacturing or actually we would like to determine it using demand and supply curves in case of manufacturing it's not a similar case to uh, the agriculture sector so let's start from the origin this is the total product of labor in the manufacturing given km1 this is machine or um, capital in the manufacturing se sector as long as manufacturing se uh, sector suffers from uh, shortage of workers, so the wage rate will be much more higher than the wage rate in the agriculture sector. This is the wage rate in the agriculture. So the manufacturing se sector will be higher. This is the supply of labor in the manufacturing sector. And this is demand for labor. at a level of capital which is km1 and this is the equilibrium point as we said before that invest uh, sorry uh, producers has one main objective is to make profit in order to reinvest it reinvestment of capital will lead to a shift of the production function upwards so this is total productivity of worker in the manufacturing sector given that level of capital is going to increase from km1 to km2 as a result demand for labor is going to increase as well so this is the demand for labor at km2 and if you are going to do the same once again so production function will shift upward 
total productivity of workers are going to increase while capital is going to increase to km3 and we are going to have a new demand function at a new level of capital this process will continue for a time period up to the point we are going to absorb all surplus workers in the uh, labor sector what are the main criticism of this model criticism of lewis arthur model There is one main criticism for this model, which is this model assumes that the rate of labor transfer and the employment creation in the modern sector or the manufacturing sector is proportional to the rate of modern sector capital accumulation. The faster the rate of capital accumulation, the higher the growth rate and the faster the job creation and job, uh, uh, labor absorption from the rural sector. What if the capitalist profits are invested in more sophisticated labor saving capital equipment? If you are going to use capital instead of workers. So in this case, you are not going to hire more workers. So in this case, This is quantity of labor, and this is real wages, or the price. Supply curve, or the wage rate in the manufacturing sector, or the modern sector. This is D1 at KM1. But now let's assume that investors are going to invest their investments in um, a more advanced capital technique that require less workers instead of more workers. So in this case, the demand curve would be like that. So this is the D2 or the new demand curve. We are going to meet at the same level of workers, which is L1, and there isn't any higher workers will be employed or hired in this sector. So the idea of development in this sector, which is based on the absorption of the surplus workers from the rural areas to the urban areas, will not be satisfied in this case. Thank you and see you next week.